So in the last video, we created a SAS sub theme, but as you can see, the site's looking broken. And that is because now we need to download Bootstrap and compile it. So the first thing we need to do is download a copy of the SAS version of Bootstrap. So to do that, go to the download page and click on download SAS and make sure you download the SAS version. Now extract the table into your sub theme and we can delete the table because it's no longer required and rename the folder so that it's just bootstrap. So the path then should be bootstrap SAS, bootstrap assets, and then the actual bootstrap library. Okay, now that we have a copy of bootstrap, let's get a copy of the variables file. So go into bootstrap, style sheets, bootstrap, and look for an underscore variables file and just copy this. So copy the whole file and then go to SCSS and then open up underscore default hyphen variables dot SCSS and then paste the contents of the original variables below the icon font path. Now, these variables will allow us to modify all sorts of things in Bootstrap, such as the color, the grid system, uh, breakpoints, and even the navbar. And best of all, these variables that we have in the default variables file override these core variables. And this is important because in the future, we may want to upgrade this Bootstrap library. And if you were to modify the variables in this core variables file, the next time you update Bootstrap, those changes will be wiped away. So treat this Bootstrap library as you would treat core. You never ever hack core and you would never ever want to modify or hack the Bootstrap library. So just remember that. Now, SAS is smart enough when you compile things to use this variable brand primary instead of this brand primary variable. SAS will handle that out of the box, which is great for us because then we can easily update the Bootstrap library without losing our modifications. Now that we have a copy of Bootstrap, let's compile it. And to do that, we'll use this node package called Laravel Mix. It is built on top of Webpack. And if you have used Webpack in the past, you would know that a lot of the times you have to write a fair bit of boilerplate code just to compile one thing. But Laravel Mix just makes it easy with a few lines of code to compile SAS. And that's why I really, really like it. And it's maintained by the same people that maintain the Laravel PHP framework, but you don't have to use the framework to use this node package because this is just a node package. It's just JavaScript. So you can use it on a WordPress site or in our case, on a Drupal site. You don't have to use the Laravel framework to use it. Now, to use this, make sure you have Node.js installed and you have the npm command line tool installed as well because we'll be using the npm command to download this package and also compile everything. So, to get started, go to your terminal and here I can see that I'm in Bootstrap SAS, let me just clear this. And now we need to create a package.json. So to do that, just type in npm init. And just follow all the prompts, click on enter for most of it. You can change it later on. And then just hit enter. And then if we, then if we go into our editor, you can see we have a package.json, which is great. Now we need to install the Laravel Mix package. So to do that, just type in npm install Laravel Mix. And this will take about 45 seconds. Okay, once everything has been installed, if you go into your sub theme, you should see a node underscore modules folder. And if you click on it, you'll see all the packages that are required just to install one package. Yeah, that's a lot. Anyway, okay, so the next thing we need to do is create another file, and this one will be called webpack 
mix.js and then grab this bit of code below the video and paste it into here. Essentially, all this code does is it pulls in Laravel mix here and then it tells Webpack to compile the style.scss into the CSS folder. And then here, we just turn off process CSS URLs and that's it. So within four lines of code, we can compile SAS, which is awesome because I have seen grunt files or gulp files or even webpack files, which are 100 or 200 lines of code. So it's good to see that in just four lines of code, we can compile SAS. Now, the last thing we need to do is add a few NPM scripts to our package.json. So head over to the GitHub page and then go to the documentation and then click on installation and then grab a copy of this scripts down at the bottom. And then just replace this scripts section with our one and make sure you put a comma in there just so that you don't break the JSON. And essentially all this is, it allows us to create simple commands, which will then run these epic long commands. It's just a nice alias for these crazy long commands. So right now we are ready to compile. So to do that, just go into your terminal and run npm run dev. So this will run this script. So if we run that and just give it a few moments, you'll get a nice little notification on the top right. Well, you get it on a Mac. I'm not sure if you get it on other, on other platforms. And then if we go to our site and hit refresh, it's still not working. Why is that? Well, if you go and view the source, you will see that all the CSS and JavaScript is aggregated. So we need to either rebuild the cache or turn off CSS and JavaScript aggregation. I always like to turn off the CSS and JavaScript aggregation, especially if you're working locally. So go into configuration and then performance and then just turn all of this off and click on save. And then if you go back to our homepage and now you can see that the site is styled. And then if we go view source again, you can see all the different CSS and JavaScript files, all the JavaScript files are down at the bottom. But if we search for style.css, you can see it's getting loaded up. So now if we go into CSS, you can see that this style.css has a lot of styling in there. If we scroll right down to the bottom, there's 8,514 lines. And all of this was compiled by SAS. And so if we go back into our Webpack mix, you can see that Webpack compiled this style.scss and then output it into CSS slash and then output it into style.css. Now let's talk about these scripts because they do play an important part. The dev, the dev script just compiles everything but doesn't minify the CSS. So if you have a look here, you can see all the spaces, you can see all the comments and everything's nicely indented, which is great for debugging. But if we were to run npm run production, what this will do is minify everything, remove all the spaces, remove all the comments, and that will shrink the size of the style.css file. Then if we go back and you can see now the CSS file, everything's on a single line. And I think most of the comments have been stripped out, but the site still looks styled. Now the next script, which is very useful while you are developing locally, and that is the watch script. So if we were to run npm run watch, what this does is that it'll compile every single time a SAS file is modified. So instead of modifying a SAS file and then manually compiling it again and again and again, you just run this script once and then you just come along here, make your changes. So if we were to add in something, 
and hit save, it'll recompile it automatically. And this command is very useful while you are developing locally. So you want to use it as much as possible. So let's just remove this. Again, it'll compile it straight away because it is watching the SAS files all the time. Okay, let's now have a look at the variables file. So if we go into the variables file, as I mentioned earlier, you can customize Bootstrap a lot just by tweaking the variables. So here you can change the colors, you can change background, text color, fonts, the, the sizes of all the headers, padding, buttons. I mean, there's a ton here. Spend a bit of time going through it, especially if you are new to Bootstrap and you don't know what's available because I know when I started with Bootstrap and I wanted to modify the navbar, so this navbar, I straight away just overrode the CSS without learning about Bootstrap and this variables file. And it wasn't until I discovered all the way down here, you can modify a lot of the navbar just by tweaking the variables. So let's now just quickly change one of these colors. So let's just give this a green color so that it's obvious. And then if I save it, it should automatically compile because we're using npm run watch. And then if we go back here and refresh, you can see all the colors have changed and that's it. So that's how easy it is to change a color. So if you want to modify color, do not override the CSS just change this variable. So if we change this back and then save it, and then now we're back at the original color.